Hello, React Native Developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Expo SDK version 42 has been published. And in this video, I would like to show you four new features, part of this new release. Let's have a look. This video is sponsored by Expo. If you are a subscriber of my channel, you know that I've always been using Expo in my projects to gain web development like agility. I like that we can get started without even having Android Studio nor Xcode installed on the computer. So to have the same level of flexibility than for web development uh, projects is great, but as soon as we need custom native code, all these benefits would fall apart. And that brings us to the first feature part of this new release, which are custom development clients. In Expo SDK 42, you can build your own development client, either on your own computer or in the cloud using Expo application services. The client behaves just like Expo Go, but it can contain any custom native code that you desire. Custom development clients have a couple of implications. Now there is a stronger separation of concerns between the React JavaScript development lifecycle and the native development lifecycle. You can have a team truly focused on writing the JavaScript part of the application and a team focused on the native part of the application. And these teams can now ship early access to the app to members of their organization with an agility that was simply not possible before. You can create a new Expo project using Expo init or using Expo upgrade to upgrade an existing project. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I was dabbling with custom native development and I created this experimental module named React Native Shader, which you shouldn't be using, by the way, it's just a toy project. But the point is that this module is using custom native code and I just added it to my Expo project as if it was no problem. And now you can do two things from there. There is a command called Expo run iOS or run Android and that will build the native code and run the, the app on your simulator or device. But there is a step we can do before that and it's installing the Expo dev client which now when we will be running run iOS or run Android will build a custom development client. So it's going to look and feel like Expo Go but containing your own native code. So let me install it. And now I can run Expo run iOS, for instance. A few moments later. And so we see here, it looks and feels like the Expo Go client. And you have this nice menu here. You can log in into your account, do a couple of things. And so it behaves like the Expo Go client but running custom native code. And you can build your development clients through Expo application services, which means that in your GitHub repository, you won't even have an iOS or Android folder. All the steps are being completely automatized. To provide the capability of building custom development clients, the team at Expo had to do something quite interesting. Right now, you can install a React Native module that contains native code and it will work out of the box. But often you need to modify the native code, maybe to set up some permissions, to give access to some local files and so on. And the team at Expo had to provide a way to make all these steps completely automatic. And they are providing an API named Configuration Plugins. This is a project which was shared by Evan Bacon on a live stream about Expo SDK version 42. And it contains a couple of native modules, for instance, React Native YouTube, React Native Dynamic App Icon, React Native Elf, 
and so on. And here, there are a couple of interesting things to notice, is that first, if we go on the GitHub repository, there is no iOS nor Android module. In fact, here, Expo Application Services is used to build the app. And you can download here the development clients for your Android and iOS emulator automatically. And now if we go into the app.json, we see that some of the React Native modules need some extra configuration steps on the native side. So we see we have the config plugin React Native Health, React Native Voice, and for the React Native Dynamic App icon, we have some extra configuration that we can pass here, namely the images that need to be fetched to be shipped part of the application bundle. So it's really cool to see that you can have an app with a lot of uh, customized native code, but then if you go on GitHub, all the steps are automatized and you don't even see the iOS nor Android folder. As a software engineer, there is something I really like here. I imagine maybe Expo receives 10 feature requests for 10 modules with specific native code to be added to the core. And instead of adding one by one all these modules, trying to think of an abstraction where not only these 10 feature requests can be fulfilled automatically, but also many more. And so I really like these ways of thinking about making things way more scalable. To support these new exciting development workflows, the team at Expo has built a new VS Code plugin named Expo Tools, and you can do a couple of interesting things with it. First of all, it provides validation on your app.json file or ees.json file, and also auto completions on particular fields, as well as a way to preview changes which will be done on the native side. So I've shown you that in Evans Bacon demo, there is no iOS nor Android folder. And yet, thanks to this Expo plugin, you can see how the iOS or Android files would be modi modified when building the custom development client. So let me show you. Here I have my app.json file. And first things first, we can see that there is validation done via Expo tools. So for instance, I can write Let's say I want the JS engine to be Hermes. So I can write JS engine Hermes, and it's complaining already that this is not allowed. So maybe if I put it into the right place here, you see I even have like a small documentation. And we have also to completion on file URLs where they are allowed. So here you see I have my list of images. And same for the list of plugins. So if I want to have a new plugin here, I have the list of available config plugins from my project. So pretty cool. And another feature which is pretty handy, it's called Expo Preview Modifier. So here you can select a list of native files, which actually don't even exist yet, and see how they are affected by the either the, conf the configuration plugins or the changes you do in app.json. So maybe here if I open the iOS and I can change the app name and I save the file, you see here you see the change on the right side. Custom development clients are great, and it's great also that you don't need even to have an iOS, no Android folder on your GitHub repository. And yet, you keep full transparency using the Expo Tools VS Code plugin by previewing all the changes that will be applied when building the custom development client. So a very nice new feature, part of Expo SDK 42, Expo Tools, which comes and in end with custom development clients, where you can pre-visualize the changes that will be applied on the native code. SDK version 42 now ships Hermes. Hermes is a dedicated JavaScript engine built by Facebook for fast React Native apps. 
more specifically, it compiles the JavaScript bundle ahead of time into byte code. There is a lot of excitement around Hermes performance for React Native. On top of that, because more and more modules are using GSI, Hermes has become essential to debug modern React Native apps. GSI is a new C++ to JavaScript interface in React Native. Before using GSI, we could execute the JavaScript bundle remotely to debug it because it was talking to the native code via asynchronous messages. Now there is a direct communication between the native code and the GS code with GSI, and you cannot do that anymore. And this is where the Hermes debugger comes in handy. SDK version 42 is shipping React Native 063, which only supports Hermes on Android. In React Native 064, there is support for Hermes on iOS, and it is expected that upcoming version of Expo SDK will support Hermes on iOS as well. Another major feature part of this new release is the first party support for Stripe in Expo. As a Stripe user, I've always been blown away by the quality of their products and the level of excellence and details that they put in everything they do. There are a couple of interesting resources available on that topic. First, Varun Nat, aka the Unsure Programmer, who by the way has inspired a lot of my work on YouTube, has published a complete tutorial on how to integrate Stripe with Expo, including building a small Express server to handle backend requests. The team at Stripe has provided a great demo project to test all the features provided by the module. And you will see that these are not only client APIs, but also UI components that you can use to build your payment workflows. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you to Expo for sponsoring this video. Custom development clients, I feel, are a bit of a game changer, breaking down the barrier between non-Expo projects and Expo projects. And these new development workflows, which are being contributed here, are going to have tremendous impact for organizations which are using React Native. Stronger separation of concerns between the JavaScript development lifecycle and the native development lifecycle, and being able to easily ship early access to the app with a great level of agility. Now, if everything goes according to plan, next week's video should be pretty special. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.